All right, man, peace. So oftentimes I speak on relationships, particularly the relationship dynamic between the male and female in Western society. And I have a series of videos on whether or not men should quote unquote fall in love. Well, I'm going to tackle it from a different angle due to this court case here, using this as a backdrop. And that is what you have to deal with when you necessitate that a woman becomes scorned. Once again, I always hold the man to a higher standard because he's supposed to be the head of the woman. And in the same way that I tell brothers that they should not fall in love because all falling in love is is an, is an emotional infatuation with another person, which is unhealthy. And I'll probably delve deeper into that in other videos, but love is a beautiful thing. Being in love is not a beautiful thing because what that does is it leads to mental instability. And as a man, you have to be on point at all times. I've seen so-called men degrade themselves, disintegrate mentally, spiritually, over the dynamic of quote-unquote falling in love. And at the same time, as bad and as insidious as that can be for a man, conversely, when a man decides that he's going to try to manipulate a woman by making her think that he's in love with her and he's really not, or when his understanding of love is different and disparate from hers and he's not honest about it, she is going to become wrathful. <laughs> She's going to become angry. And that's well within her right. That's why it's important to be honest. And that brings us to this court case right here with Mr. Sean Holland. He claims to be in love with this female. Uh, in her view, she was treated wrongfully. And that leads to her doing things to him. That many females will do if they feel like they have been used, abused, tricked, deceived, etc. So it's incumbent upon the man to understand that so that he does not allow himself to become involved in nonsense. But anyway, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. Plaintiff Sean Holland says when he met the defendant, he thought they were soulmates and they started a romantic relationship. Let me say this very quickly. I'm not going to say that I don't believe in the concept of a soulmate. I think that you can come across people in your life or a person in your life where your personalities are so simpatico that it seems like you've known each other longer than when you have initially met them. You finish each other's sentences. You have the same likes and dislikes. Uh, they're just a lot of little idiosyncratic likenesses that you have in your personality. That make you feel like, oh wow, this person was created for me. I'm not saying that I don't believe in that. But oftentimes that is a line that men will try to use on a woman or a woman will try to use on a man when they're trying to get the other person to think that the rapport that they have is deeper than it really is. And once again, when you try to use that technique or that maneuver on another person, you better be sincere about it. Because if you get another person to truly believe that and you're actually just trying to put the wool over their eyes... Or, or pull the wool over their eyes Once they figure out what you've done That may be a life or death situation for you <laughs> Sean claims while dating He went to prison for a year And the defendant drained both of his bank accounts He's suing for the stolen money And emotional distress Now look at that shit The man said he went to prison And while he was in there The defendant drained both of his bank accounts <laughs> Defendant Rosalie Davis says Sean cheated on her throughout their entire relationship. Rosalie claims she found naked pictures of Sean that he sent to other women and naked pictures that other women had sent to him. Now you see that? And, and that's my thing. That's why I always tell brothers, just be honest. Don't tell the woman that, you're, that you guys are soulmates, that she was created for you and all this craziness. And meanwhile, <laughs> you in the shower grabbing your junk, taking photos, send it to the next broad. Because if she finds out, if the main chick, the quote-unquote main chick, or the chick who thinks that she's the main chick, if and when she finds out, it's going to be hell to pay. All right? And you will have brought it on yourself. Rosalie's countersuing for emotional distress. Start with you. Okay, Your Honor. I met Ms. Davis in April of 2016. We started a very beautiful romantic relationship. Allegedly. Um, I thought she was like my soulmate, eventually marriage down the line. 
Well, four months into the relationship, she was evicted from her place. So you thought all of that in four months? Thank you, sir. <laughs> I was about to chime in at that point myself. He didn't, and please keep in mind, it wasn't even that four months that he thought that. He said at four months is when is when the first issue started to occur. So he might have been thinking that in, within two weeks. Hey, there are certain people who are just in love with the idea of being in love. You have to ask yourself, what does it mean to love someone? What does it mean to be in love? And as I've stated in previous videos, when I speak on this topic to brothers, all love is is loyalty and sacrifice. If you're not willing to sacrifice for that other person, if you're not just as concerned about or even more concerned about their well-being than you are your own, then you're not in love with them. Or pardon me, I, let, me, let, me let me correct that. You don't love them. If you're not willing to be loyal to that person, meaning what? To stick with them through adversity, through trials and tribulations, then you don't love that person. You just don't. Some people use that word love in a very frivolous manner. They throw it around like a frisbee. And that is very irresponsible. Many of the people that you read about in the newspaper on page two or page three who get found in, in an alleyway, stabbed up, when they, when they claim that it was a crime of passion. No, it was really a crime of deception. You lied to that person and made them think that you were somebody that you were not. And when they found out, they decided that, they, that you did not deserve to live anymore. So once again, please be very careful with the sentiments and the words that you put forth towards other people. Because if you're not truly trying to uh, be as invested as you want to sell them that you're trying to be, it's not going to end well. It's not going to end well. So once again, some people are just in love with the idea of being in love. And those are normally the people who uh, get bored very quickly. They start looking for alternative forms of, of expressing their, you know, their desire. That drug, the drug of being in love, which is just a high. That's why I tell brothers to be wary of that in love spirit. Many women think that they want a man to be in love with them until it actually happens. And then he's the same guy calling you at work five times a day, peeking through your windows when you don't want to be with him anymore, following you around, All right, what you call a stalker. No one in their right mind should want a man to necessarily be in love with them. You, you should want a person, whether you're a man and you're with a woman or a female and you're with a man, you should want that person to love you. But as I always state, my channel is geared towards the man, particularly the so-called black man, really Exclusively the so-called black man. Anyone else who's listening and who likes the channel, that's cool. But the so-called black man is always the one at the very, very bottom of all of these societal demographics. So I don't understand why anyone would see it as an issue who the channel is focused towards. And as we know, the relationship structure in the so-called black community is not bad. It's abysmal. Why is that? It's because the so-called black man is allowing the so-called black woman to stipulate the 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 manner in which you're dealing with her and you cannot have that you are the one who was, who was supposed to specify the rules of engagement so-called black man but you know a lot of brothers don't know how to do that but let's get back to the case <laughs> Or were you gaming? Maybe you were just gaming. I think that he was gaming, but he didn't realize he was gaming. You have some people who are conscious gamers, and you have some people who are unconscious gamers. Meaning what? Some people run game on people, and they're not even aware that's what they're doing. Because they're so in love with the idea of being in love. It's like someone who's searching for that next high. They, they want to feel the same feeling that they felt the first time that they got high. And they'll say and do whatever they have to say and do to get to that high again. You know, he looks like a, a, a an unconscious gamer. One of these little strange dudes who tries to find strange lonely women who he can game up. I just felt like we were soulmates. Um, our birthdays are like day apart. See, people do like that, that, but it's usually infatuation, I guess. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. That's all being in love is, is infatuation. That's not love. That's in love. It's a big difference. Big difference. Right. In love is you go to sleep thinking about this person. You wake up thinking about this person. Uh, you know, you text them 500 times a day. It's normally how people are when they first meet or when they first start to 
um, have strong feelings for one another or, you know, like little high school kids or junior high school, what they call puppy love. Grown people you love with propriety, with moderation, but with focus. I mean, that, that's how it's supposed to be done. And a lot of these women, they don't even understand what moderation is, but that's a whole other topic. Four months, I want to marry you. It could have been your own soul, man. Okay. Go I was ahead. just trying to be a good guy. You could already put it on you pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's most likely what it was. You know, she, she gave a man some coochie and he got his brains blown. Okay. That's my fault. I was trying to be a good guy, gentlemen, so when she got evicted from her place, I decided to let her move in with me. And at the same time, I... Well, did you ever think that maybe the only reason why she made you think that she was in love with you was because she was in financial trouble and she knew that, that you was a sucker for love and that you were going to allow her to move into your apartment? My heart is my caretaker because I, uh, I have physical, I'm physically disabled because I have nerve damage in my left leg. In 2009, I was um, shot by the police. I was racially profiled walking down the street. Where? In St. Louis, Missouri. Wow. I was uh, walking down the street. St. Louis. The police officer racially profiled me, jumped out on me, so I took off started running because I was scared. And uh, when I took off started running, I was shot three times. And I. Let me say this, brothers. <laughs> you know, they say that people can do things to make them look guilty. And I'm, I'm sure that certain pro-black dudes will jump in the comments and say, oh, well, you know, there's never an excuse. Uh, when you understand that you're a citizen of the United States, if you're approached by the police and they claim that you fit a profile, if you know that you have done nothing wrong, as long as you can prove your whereabouts, it shouldn't be a problem. That, But, that, but again, this is why brothers also... Um, and I'm not trying to tell brothers what to do or how to conduct themselves. That's not really not what this channel is about. I give my perspective. Uh, you can either vibe with it or you don't. It doesn't really matter to me one way or the other. Uh, a lot of brothers like to brag about how many situations they've been in with the police and how they get racially profiled. In my life, I found that due to the fact that I move with a purpose, I tend to avoid a lot of bullshit. When you're not moving with a purpose... Bullshit tends to find you. And even in the event that you're moving with a purpose and you know why you're out and about and bullshit finds you, there's a certain decorum and tact that you have to have. You should never run from the police. Things are going to be what it's going to be. Uh, God forbid if the cops shoot you and kill you. Um, if it's your day to go, it's your day to go. And I know that that might sound strange and might sound harsh. But all death is the transition back to the spirit world. It, that doesn't mean that it gives you an excuse to be belligerent or cantankerous with the police. You're supposed to go along with law enforcement. All right. We live in a society today where it's very popular for, for so-called black men to run on the Internet and everybody's a coon and everybody's this and that. And he's supposed to be this big warrior over the over the Internet. I've always said this. If you truly were a revolutionary, I would see you on the news. I would have seen you run up in the police precinct in the police station and start that race war. I have yet to see any niggas doing that. So my thing is this. Either you're going to be a law abiding citizen or you're going to start the revolt. There is no in between. I say all that to say this. Yes, you do look guilty if the cops approach you and you just start to run. OK. Yes, it, it, that is rather incriminating. When you show that you have a lack of tact. Uh, you don't have a cool head and you have no decorum. That's just how it goes. Um, if they claim that you fit a description, there's nothing that you can do to controvert that. So, so you might as well make sure that you keep a cool head. So, I know that certain brothers might say, oh, well, how could you say that? Uh, this society that we live in, brothers, look, man, life is very, very simple. It's not easy, but it's very simple. If you don't like what's going on here, instead of spending all that money that you're spending on Air Jordans and uh, and all that other shit that you're spending money on, spend it on a plane ticket and there's a plenty of countries in Africa that you can choose from. Uh, either that or you start this revolution and you go out with a bang. That's how I look at it. If not, then we have to pursue our culture and build yourself up that way. 
Those are the three options. Start the revolution, leave the country, or try to build yourself up so you can build up your community to the best of your ability. Those are the only three options. Sitting on the internet and calling everybody a coon and clickety-clack, clickety-clack, press and send, that shit is not changing a fucking thing. And sitting back playing video games and smoking weed all day, that's not changing anything either. That's how it goes. Oh, and and let me not forget, talking about the white man and giving back reparations... Nigga, you're going to get reparations on never you worry first. Okay? That's when you're going to get reparations. So if you're, not, if you're too cowardly to be a revolutionary and you're too broke to lead a country, then shut the fuck up. Period. That's how I view it. And if certain people might not like it, I don't give a shit. But back to this brother here. The cops approach you, you stand there like a man, and you address the issue. When I was assaulted and they let their dogs bite me up and stuff like that. And then after that, I was sent immediately to prison. How so long? I did a year. Stay tuned. The case continues after this. What were you convicted of? Your Honor, I'm going to be honest. I had a firearm. Um, I wasn't supposed to have a firearm, but like I said, I stay in St. Louis. It's very dangerous. So I felt like that was needed to protect myself. And you. St- so, in other words, you, you stood there and you lied and claimed that. Uh, the cops were harassing you for no reason because they said that you fit a description and you start running, which made you look guilty because you had an illegal firearm on you. See, brothers, this is the type of shit I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Um, you have to go through the, the protocol to try to get a firearm if you feel that unsafe. But if you're going to carry an illegal firearm and then when the cops approach you, you want to use the line of I was I was racially profiled. Well, you know, it's kind of hard to claim that you've been racially profiled when you're doing something that is against the law of the land. And look, I, I say this all the time. This is a pro-truth channel. A lot of times people are not going to like what I, what I have to say. And that's okay. Once again, I don't give a shit. Um, when, you, when you have a pro-truth perspective, you should alienate or makes, make every demographic who comes to your channel feel uncomfortable at some point in time, whether it's the woman, whether it's the so-called black man, whether it's the people of the other races, whether it's people of different religions. In the process of pursuing the truth, that's going to happen. But once again, that's why I say this channel is focused on the so-called black man. When you was a child and your mother made you eat vegetables, it didn't taste good, but it was good for you. However you move, you must consider the consequences of how you move. Don't leave your home with an illegal firearm and then claim that you were racially profiled. And then when the cops come at you, you want to run and claim you was racially profiled and give a bullshit reason why you were locked up for a year. And you say you received disability as a result of your injury. You didn't sue the department? I tried, but they said since I had the firearm, they, threw out, they canceled out the lawsuit. Okay. That's uh, not an appropriate penalty or treatment for a firearm possession, but... You know, and the problem is, St. Louis has had those problems, uh, and so it's hard to defend it. It's hard to defend St. Louis uh, and the surrounding police departments because they've had that problem. Ferguson, of course, Missouri is a suburb of St. Louis. The job of the police department, once again, brothers, is to take out the trash. The police are garbage collectors for human beings. That's their job. That's why they get evaluated based off of how many tickets and citations they write out. Their job is not to protect and serve. That is a company line. Their job is to tax the citizens. That's it. That's why I stated the only solution to the so-called racial problem between uh, so-called blacks and the police is for so-called black people to have their own police force. A lot of brothers don't want to hear that. You know why? Because they want that hug from the Caucasian cop. And they don't trust the so-called black man as an authority figure. That's why. But the only solution between the so-called black community and the police force is to have an all-black police force. And you can only have that when you have your own society. Our people think like employees. They don't think like bosses. See, there's so many, there, there are so many issues ingrained in the so-called black community. That's why people have a hard time understanding a lot of things that I'm saying. If, you know, the so-called black community is a matriarchy. So when you're talking about the police force, a policeman is an authority figure, like almost on the level of a teacher or an administrator. If the so-called black man does not get respect in his own home, that is why subconsciously people would not trust a so-called black man as a police officer. And I'm not talking about 
uh, in the paradigm of the current police force that you see today. I'm talking about a, 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 a refurbished, a reimagined so-called police force that is meant to uphold real laws. And where the incentive is not to see how many people you can tax, but the only way you can have that is if you have an economic system that has actual gold and silver back in the money. This, this is, you know, honestly, the topic is a little bit too vast for this court case. But once again, everything is connected, brothers. And we've had an uprising there as a result of uh, a police officer being acquitted uh, after uh, uh, shooting a person direct on tape. Um, so I don't know how to defend them. them. There's been a lot of tension between the people and the police in the city. I know. Yeah, I know it. I so, know it. After, All I can say is there are bad police there, but a lot of good ones. There's probably more good ones in St. Louis and the surrounding area than there are bad ones. But uh, I believe there are a lot of bad ones. <laughs> so. Well, there's certainly a lot of bad ones, but the main thing is that so-called black people have to start policing each other and policing themselves. Um, most people in the so-called black community's attitude is... Uh, do you, do them, I'm a do me, delima. That's basically what that is. Do what thou wilt. That's the overall sentiment in the so called black community. So, therefore, the powers that be do not trust you to police yourselves. And that's where the conundrum comes in. So, don't y'all follow me or try to get me because I got some security in my own. I got my own police. <laughs> Well, after that, Your Honor, I did my time and just changed my life around. My you see, Mathis understands that as a public figure, if he speaks up against the cops, even he can be dealt with. That's why he said, don't y'all try to follow me and come to get me because I have my own police. <laughs> my whole concerns to never get back in no more trouble because that, that was an eye opener for me. I know a lot of people say when they go to prison, they never go back. I haven't been back and that's been over 10 years since then. Yeah. Well, that's a great thing, brother, but you misrepresented the reason why you were incarcerated in the first place. I always say this. I know a lot of people might not like it, but if you feel like your neighborhood is so unsafe that you have to carry around a gun, then I think, honestly, I think that the best thing to do is to try to focus on moving out of that neighborhood. A lot of so-called black people, especially a lot of so-called young black boys, are not trained to think about their future. They only train to think about the here and now. They get placed in front of a TV set and they're, and they're told, just sit in front of the TV and let those images permeate into you and, you know, we'll let the television raise you. Um, there's a lot of issues going on in the raising of so-called black boys. They're not taught anything. Um, they're not trained to approximate where they want to be in life from a young age. They have no vision. And that leads to a lot of the demonism that they tend to start conducting themselves with after puberty why is that it's because they're not they're not given any restraints they're not given they're not given an image of who they were they're not told anything about their history so this creates an element of of antipathy in the so-called black community where many of the to be quite frank with you many of the young black male teenagers become borderline terrorists and i know certain people are not going to like this i don't give a shit it is what it is what are you teaching your son to be? Is all you're teaching him is that the white man is this and the white man is that? Look, the white man has to be addressed, but only after you address yourself and you address your son. Like these guys, they come on here always talking about black power, this and, and um, uh, you know, what white people got from slavery. Well, are you trying to put them back in slavery? Are you trying to start the revolution or are you just talking shit? And... If you were to start the revolution and you won, then what? What are you going to do after you win the revolution? Do you have the foggiest idea how to run a society? I'm, and that's, this, is, this, this, this is a totally hypothetical scenario because we all know that you pro-black niggas are not going to start a revolution. And even if you did, you wouldn't have the foggiest idea how to run, how to run a society. So that's what we need to work on. We need to work on implementing a ruling class mentality. So that you can imagine how to govern. You can't even do that shit right now. I'm just being honest. A lot of cats can't leave flies to shit. Got nothing to teach your woman. Got nothing to teach your children. 
Don't like it? Oh well. just make this observation i was uh, incarcerated for um 11 months um ultimately sentenced to seven for carrying a weapon and you say yours has been 10 years i've been, mine's been 40 so hopefully you get another 30 years <laughs> is that your only conviction no sir Okay, I was going to suggest you get a uh, an expungement. In most states, after five years, you can get an expungement if it's only one um, conviction, which was the case for me as an adult conviction. And uh, Well, before I let the judge continue, you see that the plaintiff said that that was not his only uh, conviction. So once again, he was carrying around a gun. I'm not going to say that he was carrying around for criminality, but if he's been busted more than once... I have a hard time believing that he was busted more than once just for carrying around a gun for protection and he was not involved in any type of sordid activity. No disrespect to him. It's good to see that he's turned his life around. But stop trying to misrepresent the dynamics around which you were locked up. See, when your foundation is based on a lie, you can't build anything on top of that. The so-called black man has to learn to accept accountability and culpability. So that at least we could start from something sincere. Stop trying to fool other people. Uh, however, that's a second chance. Most uh, state law does not give you a third chance. Correct. So if you had a second conviction, that's going to be on your record. I made you my mistakes, Ron. I owned up to him. I made my mistakes, Ron. I owned up to him. Good. At least you're regretful and you've moved on. Ma'am, why don't you give me some background? Uh, uh, well, when me and Sean first got together, he was cheating on me through the whole relationship. I thought you guys were soulmates, though. Like, I would find messages. How long after April 16th do you discover he was cheating? Um, probably... Uh, well, we started dating on April 16th. I found out on April 17th. <laughs> and I believe it, too, because... He spent the majority of his testimony misrepresenting himself, so I'm pretty sure that he did the same thing to her. Like two months in to the relationship. Okay, and were you still head over heels in love, or this isn't? That's true? not true, Your Honor. Everything so you never was cheated fine. on it. We didn't have, yes, we didn't have our first. Did you ever cheat on it? Not physically. No, I didn't. You see that? In other words. He was trying to get with other chicks, but he didn't get to seal the deal. Either that or he did seal the deal with other chicks and he knows that she doesn't have proof that he did. See, this guy talks around a lot of shit. This is what I'm talking about. Jimmy Carter. President Carter said he cheated in his mind. Yeah. <laughs> that was a sin. He said his sin was he cheats in his mind. Clinton Facebook. says just because there was a particular type of uh, sexual activity involved, he said, I never had sex with that woman. And he said, it depends on your definition. So, your what's Facebook. your definition? <laughs> what's your definition for cheating? Did you, what'd you do? Cheating All the right, mind? Right. Cheating the text? What? Text. Pretty much. Facebook gets everybody in trouble. Facebook's the devil. So don't get me in trouble. That's what I'm saying. Facebook ain't the devil. You have the devils. You have devils who sign on to fake book. That's that's what that is. You have devils that sign on to fake book. Fake book ain't the devil. Uh, fake book is just a, a uh, you know a medium that is used to help people do a lot of sneaky shit. And I, I broached that subject in the video that I did on micro cheating. The smartphone and these other applications have given people more leeway and more avenues to fuck their own shit up. And once again, there's nothing wrong with a man having more than one woman. But since he decided that he wanted to play the Lothario and lie and tell the broad, so in love with you. Once again, brother, stop trying to sell these females a fake bill of goods. It's only going to come back to you in the end. And once again, hell have no fury like a woman scorned. You have to understand how thin the line can be between love and hate especially when you have decided to divest a certain amount of power over to that female which many men do 
either when they're in love or when they're trying to convince a female that they're in love with them. Once you have divested that power, once the female realizes that you're living a lie, you're trying to push your lie on her, she's not going to have any respect for you. She's not going to have any mercy either. All right. So once again, I see from the plaintiff that he's someone who tries to make himself appear to be a quote unquote nice guy. Uh, let go of that nice guy shit. All right. Nobody's going to respect you <laughs> being a nice guy. Uh, there's respect and there's being honorable and a man of your word, things of that nature. That nice guy shit, that's that's not going to pay off in the long run. Go ahead, ma'am. And what did, what did you discover? How did you determine he was um, cheating? I used to find like messages in his phones and saying um, what what type of things convinced you that he was cheating like outside I was of his mind? Seeing naked pictures of women. Naked pictures. And I was seeing naked pictures of him sending to women. And she's telling the truth. And also, I read a message he used to have sexual intercourse with a woman. I guess she had a um, some kind of health issue from the sexual intercourse i read that he snatched the phone from me erased the message and say that i didn't see it and he had hurry up and erased it in my face he said your mind playing tricks yes on that's what he said <laughs> the judge will render his verdict when we return all right why are you still under today um, when i was incarcerated i got incarcerated again on may 1st 2017 what I was on my way coming from buying me breakfast and I got flagged and I had a uh, tail light. Racial profiling again? Huh? Racial profiling again? No, sir. I so you gonna hurt our cause. So. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. That's my point. <laughs> That's my point. You have to understand when you start talking about quote unquote racism, your cupboard better be clean. Because they're going to nitpick anything. And that's why I tell people all the time, my channel is not for the gender war bullshit and it's not for the circular racial conversation. I'm not interested in going back and forth with the Caucasian on their opinions about race. I don't give a shit about your opinions about race. All right. People start going back and forth arguing about that nonsense because um, you can argue a societal construct forever. You can argue a corporate title forever that's all black and white are those are corporate titles those are corporate constructs a color cannot be a race your race is based off of your lineage your uh, your language your culture etc that's why i constantly harp on that on this channel but since our people have been so deculturalized and they and they understand intrinsically that they're not going to be able to get that culture back they want, they want to refute that sentiment all the time and argue. I tell cats like this all the time. When you want to start to uh, disavow yourself of the importance of culture, then we don't have anything else to talk about. Because you're just really just trying to stay a nigga your whole life. No disrespect. That's really all you're trying to do. You're trying to maintain that nigga nonsense where you can keep arguing. You know, people get off on that. A lot of so-called black people, they get off on the constant arguing and bickering with the Caucasian. That's why I liken the rapport between um, the lower level blacks and the Caucasian to a couple that's always fussing and fighting. And, and the woman in the relationship doesn't want to leave because her self-esteem is so low and she's constantly been told that she's nothing without her man. That's who the Caucasian represents. I don't get involved in that dynamic. It's weakness. But just to get back to the point, as Mathis is starting to figure out, as I already did earlier on in the case, this guy's a huckster. He's trying to get over on that racial profiling shit. Yet I know the cops just keep chasing you and they just happen to find you with an illegal gun and all this other shit. Get out of here, man. Oh, it's coming in here with that nonsense. No, sir. I had a tail line. You heard folks' cause. You talked to me like they had unfairly prosecuted you. Perhaps it was excessive force, but you were engaged in an illegal act. Thank you, sir. Carrying a pistol. You're talking about racially profiling you. They profiled you because it looked like you had a gun. That is wrong. racial profiling, though. <laughs> Looking like you have something. You gotta, but look, did, you gotta they, stop you. did they really profile him, quote unquote? Or did they recognize him? Uh, I, I, need to, I need to check his arrest record. Did they profile him or did they recognize him? There's a big difference you for something a, a violation yeah. you were engaged in no. I was in, in this case what was happening this time 
This time I was in the wrong driving, my uh, tail light was out, so that gave them probable cause to flag me. Mm -hmm. And at that same time, I had a, a old, old warrant for um, trespassing, so I was incarcerated. Trespassing? Trespassing who, bro? You see what I'm talking about with this bullshit, man? Look, brothers, once again, and I know it's some of the pro-black dudes are going to you know, try to change this over because, you know, pro-black people, they love going back and forth with the white man. Uh, you know, you guys got to take that to another channel. I, I don't have time for the dumb shit. At the end of the day, the most important thing for the so-called black man to do is to examine himself and scrutinize himself very, very, very closely. Because there are a series of patterns and cycles that go on in the so-called black community that the only person who can change it is the so-called black man. That is it. The white man is not going to save you. You can keep fighting and arguing and begging for reparations and all this other shit. And a lot of you, I mentioned this on a video a long time ago, a lot of you don't really even understand what the process for reparations would be. You would have to prove that you actually were the descendant of a slave. And you have such a thing as, as the slave narrative, which is something that is heavily promoted in the history books in this society. That being that all black people are the descendants of slaves. I guarantee you that if they ever agreed to reparations, they will start going through the genealogical tables of many people and a lot of you so-called black people might not like what was found you might find that you were a descendant of a, of a free black you might find that you were a descendant of an aboriginal american who was never in slavery you might find that you were the descendant of, a, of the so-called blacks who came in from europe certain caucasians they might go into their genealogical table and find that they're the descendants of a so-called slave, either black or white. You have a lot of people in America passing as white who are the, de who is, who are the descendant of a so-called black man or woman who was in slavery or a Caucasian. So, you know, you guys have fallen into the color paradigm. When I say you guys, obviously I'm not talking about every so-called black person. I'm talking about the ones who like to bicker and argue about race but ain't going to do shit. A lot of you guys are operating on that level. And once again, when I say you guys, I'm not talking about all black people. I'm not talking about the intelligent brothers out there. I'm talking about, no disrespect, a lot of you bottom feeding ass niggas. So you can get mad about that if you want. I don't give a shit. Okay. $750 bond. I had the money, so I asked her, can she use the money out of my account to buy me out? This was May 1st. Um, from that point on, she didn't buy me out. I ended up sitting in St. Louis City Workhouse for um, two and a half months. Uh, it made national news, Your Honor, because of the... And that, that chick looked batshit crazy, too. She just rocking back and forth, smiling to herself. He might have dodged a bullet. Because that, <laughs> that bitch remind me like she like the black version of Kathy Bates from Misery. Motherfucker just wake up, he got his feet tied to the bed, she take out a big sledgehammer. <laughs> so the... the, the, the Conditions were so deplorable there. Yep, sure were in St. Anyway, Louis. Anyway, there were people passing out in Missouri. This one like in Missouri that. prisons. Yep. And Protesters jeer St. Louis jail's lack of air conditioning after inmates were heard crying, "Help us!" during the heat wave. Yeah. It was so hot and it was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> the sign. I don't mean to laugh. The sign that the inmate had said it's so hot in her. Yo, the black man got to put a comedic spin on everything, man. <laughs> Motherfuckers in there dying from heat consumption and, and, and they thought enough to, to turn it into a Nelly song. <laughs> it's, it's hot in her. Um, that's where the emotional, just, uh, the emotional um, coming in. A at. video from the latest protest showed officers dragging at least one person away from a demonstration during a brief. Uh, the protesters were prompted by an alarming video shared on Facebook on Tuesday where inmates can be heard crying, help, help us. We ain't got no air. Yeah, I heard about that. I yeah. know jail's not supposed to be summer camp, but it, the conditions there were inhumane. Yep. Yep. All right. And what did happen with the money and she took the money and she just started spending everything on my account. She um she drained both of my accounts without to your permission, dollar. obviously. There you go. Did you get you out of jail? No. Ever? I have to get one Spent of my family. All the money and didn't even no, It was only seven fifty for you to get out of jail? Yes, sir. And how much of your money did she spend? Twenty five? Two thousand four hundred and forty nine dollars. 
She would have still had a bunch of money to steal <laughs> after the I'll have a breakdown for all the charges if you need to. And that was her laughing in the background. But once again, this is a comedy of errors because well, I just get the spirit, the energy off this guy that he's a wannabe Lothario. Uh, I, I think that he's someone who is misrepresenting himself as a person in court. I don't think that people get caught up in that much bullshit unless there's a little bit of bullshit in them as a person. Uh, I think that he tried to deceive this female and that wrathful aspect of the woman came out and she said, fuck him. He most likely already gave her access to his bank account, trying to show that he was some super in love soulmate, when in reality all that was a cover, you know, to hide the fact that he was trying to cultivate some side chicks. He got locked up, the chick probably said, that's karma, I'm going to spend all his money, he's already given me the pin number and the account number, he can't prove that I'm using it against his will. The only thing that she, sh that, that she did wrong in regards to uh, executing her plan of, of revenge is that she didn't bail him out. Because I guarantee you, had she bailed him out but spent, but spent all the money on her utilities first, he's such a sap he, and, a, and a simp, he wouldn't have even gotten upset. Let's see it, ma'am. What happened? Uh, highlight it once. You had enough money to steal even after you got him out. I know I had wanted him to stay in there so for him to suffer like I suffered. I wanted to pay him back for cheating on me. So you see that? So I left him in jail. And stole his money. Is that part of the payback? No. Used the money. Obviously, it was part of the payback. Money I was paying his my permission. bills, and he knew that I was paying. He was paying my bills. My and he, cell phone he agreed bills. to. No, I didn't, he right. gave I you didn't permission to make those charges. No, he didn't. Well, get then, you paying your charges. bills with, without his permission, and it was his money. He used his money without his permission. And what is your counterclaim for? I'm sure that she was getting her bills paid by him before he got locked up. He just didn't give her permission to pay her bill to pay her bills out of his account while he was locked up. He thought that she was going to at least bail him out. But once again, brothers, the lesson is when you try to put on that that false image for the woman. Don't be upset when that wrathful energy comes out, man. The, the woman has a long memory when she felt like she has been deceived. And a lot of these women, they get off on that. They get off on telling themselves that a man lied to them. Even when they saw all the signs. Even if they themselves, she might have had other men on the side. But they love to play the victim role. So don't give them the opportunity. Or emotional distress. Mm -hmm. He got out. <laughs> yeah, that was the emotional distress. He he was able to get out. When I found out that he was cheating on me and he had a health issue with the woman that he was having sex with, I had got scared and thought I had an STD. Now, where did you get this information based on the text? Text messages. Sir, yeah. do you want to respond to that? Had there been any discussion regarding an STD with you bringing home an STD? No, Your Honor. This is the first you're hearing? Was no. There were discussions no. about sexual acts and stuff like uh -huh. that. That was as far as it went on no. the uh, text for Facebook. I, I believe the chick. I believe that you was out there getting sloppy and, you know, there was a scare by the STD. She happened to see it and, you know, you're trying to cover it up. But, you know, it's, it's whatever, man. You have any proof? No. All right. And you have faulty reasoning, thinking that you were in the right or you were not in the wrong for spending his money and not even getting him out of jail. $2,599 is your judgment. Your claim is dismissed. You can't prove he caused you emotional okay. distress because you believe that you had an STD. Have a good day. I don't think that she really had any uh, quantifiable emotional distress. I think that she's clearly, she clearly was born emotionally distressed. Look at the chick. The chick is batshit crazy. Friends. Oh, you know what that means? That means I need a sponsor to help me pay my bills still. That's what that means, all that friend shit. <laughs> she said, hopefully we can still be friends. After you get the money back, I'll give you some coochie, and then you can give me the money back that I just gave you back. We'll be friends probably eventually again. It's just uh Oh, please, eventually meaning tonight. 
the I was just hurt about all my money. You didn't have to do all of that. <laughs> Yeah, she's realizing that. She realized that she didn't have to do all that because since she screwed you over for screwing her over, she hasn't been able to get screwed since then. So now she's going to let you screw her back over so that she can get the money back that, that she's losing. That's all it's about. Everything is a, is a transaction. But you know what? That's it on that. All right? Peace.